In Greek mythology, Niobe was a queen whose tragic tale serves as a cautionary reminder of the perils of excessive pride and arrogance. Niobe was the daughter of Tantalus, a mortal king, renowned for his wealth and prosperity. He was believed to have been favored by the gods and invited to their feasts, but his actions eventually led to his downfall. Tantalus, driven by his arrogance, committed a grave offense against the gods. He decided to test their omniscience and divine knowledge by serving them his own son, Pelops, as part of a sacrificial meal. As punishment for his sacrilegious act, Tantalus was condemned to eternal torment in the underworld. This arrogance of Tantalus was passed down to his daughter, Niobe, which ultimately guided to her destruction. She was married to Amphion, the ruler of Thebes, and together they had fourteen children, seven sons and seven daughters. Niobe believed herself to be blessed beyond measure, considering her numerous offspring as a testament to her superiority over the gods. She saw herself as more deserving of admiration and worship than the divine goddess Leto, who had only two children, Apollo and Artemis. Fueled by her unchecked hubris, Niobe openly flaunted her supposed superiority and challenged the very authority of the gods themselves. The city of Thebes, ruled by Niobe's husband, Amphion, was known for its lavish ceremonies and grand displays of wealth and power. On one such occasion, a grand festival was organized to honor the gods, and the citizens of Thebes gathered to offer sacrifices and pay homage to the divine beings. During the festival, as the citizens reverently offered their prayers and sacrifices to the gods, Niobe, filled with an overwhelming sense of pride, arrogantly proclaimed her own superiority. In the midst of the ceremony, she openly mocked Leto, the mother of Apollo and Artemis, boasting about her own blessings and the vast number of children she had borne. Niobe's words were a direct challenge to Leto's motherhood and a clear display of disrespect towards the goddess and her divine offspring. Leto, though known for her gentle nature, could not bear such blatant insolence. The goddess, hurt and angered by Niobe's arrogance, summoned her divine children, Apollo and Artemis, to teach the pompous queen a lesson she would never forget. Apollo, the god of light, music and archery, and Artemis, the goddess of the hunt and protector of young children, heeded their mother's call and descended upon Thebes with swift vengeance. They arrived at the palace of Niobe, where her children were blissfully unaware of the impending doom that awaited them. Apollo, with his golden bow and arrows, took aim at Niobe's seven proud sons. One by one, the arrows pierced their flesh, ending their lives in an instant. The screams of agony filled the halls as the young princes collapsed, their vibrant futures extinguished in a cruel twist of fate. Niobe's heart, once filled with pride, now shattered into a million fragments, her anguish echoing through the palace. Meanwhile, Artemis, ever compassionate and protective, turned her attention to Niobe's daughters. With her silver bow and arrows, she unleashed her divine wrath upon the unsuspecting girls. Each arrow struck its mark with deadly precision, extinguishing the lives of the seven beautiful princesses. Their cries of terror mingled with their mother's anguished wails, creating an atmosphere of sorrow and despair. Niobe's joy had transformed into unimaginable grief as she witnessed the massacre of her beloved children. Her pride had brought about their tragic fate, and her heartache was beyond measure. In the face of such overwhelming loss, Niobe pleaded with the gods for mercy, beseeching them to return her children to her embrace. But her cries fell upon deaf ears, for the gods were unyielding in their punishment. The divine twin's merciless retribution had left Niobe bereft and broken. The once grand and bustling palace now echoed with silence and sorrow, its walls stained with the blood of the fallen. In her desolation, Niobe became a mere shell of her former self, devoid of the arrogance that had led to such devastation. 
The gods, unmoved by her pleas, chose to further emphasize the consequences of her arrogance. They transformed Niobe into a stone statue, preserving her in eternal agony and grief. The statue was placed atop Mount Sipilus, a stark reminder of the price one pays for challenging the gods and succumbing to the deadly sin of pride. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to get more content like this.